Hi, it's Natalie Marie here. Welcome to a start of a new video series. Uh, I'm doing a bit of a cram at the end of the year, so join me. <laughs> One of the things I absolutely love in my reading is discovering new Australian books and keeping up with the new releases that are coming out and finding authors I've not heard about before or reading, you know, another book that an author that I love has released. And this year has been a little raggedy for obvious reasons. So it's now nearly the start of November and I'm going to try and cram some 2020 new releases in. So I started by making a list. I had a small list at the start of the year, but then I went through Instagram. I went and looked at Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me at her videos. Look, if you want to know about Australian literature, what's being published, all of those sorts of things. Jacqueline is your gal. She's amazing and such a great advocate for um, Australian authors. So I'll leave her channel below. Right. I went through, um, you know, publishers' websites and readings, bookshop, um, online store and things like that to find the 2020 new releases that I was interested in reading. And I came up with a list and it's, it's, it's certainly not the end of it, but it is a start. <laughs> Look at all those books and the L's next to it mean that it's at my library. So, so I thought I'd just share with you my experience of reading through that list and finding new Australian books and new authors that I love. I can't wait. I'm very excited. There's this really interesting thing that goes on in my head because um, I absolutely want to back Australian authors and um, new books that are coming out. And I want to share with people, all of you, all of you that are overseas. I know that sometimes you can't get your hands on these books, but it's important to me that I'm kind of advocating for Australian literature. But my pledge to you <laughs> is that I will only share and advocate for those books that I connect with. I often get a bit disappointed in the blind advocating of books and a book is different for every person because of the experience and that they bring to the book yada 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 we all know that but I'm not going to across the board with this list to say everything's fantastic and you must read it I really want to share my experience with you and share the reasons why it's great and why I love it and why it's just not working for me so please know that this series is not going to be just me banging on about how amazing Australian books are it is, will be a very objective book, but it will be my opinion. And I really value um, sharing honesty with you guys. So I just wanted to put that in there. It, it was something that was playing on my mind. You might even, not even be worried about it, but it was something that was playing on my mind. <laughs> the first book that came in in my library is Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings. I have not heard of Kathleen Jennings as an author before. Uh, when I looked her up, I did recognise her work though, but not for her writing. I recognised her work as an illustrator. This is actually her illustration on the cover and she's won awards for um, her illustrations on um, some fantasy novels. I think they're fantasy, but I've seen this book around booktube. This is like the Cruel Prince series. I'll put a little picture here. So she illustrated all of those covers. So I recognised her work from there. <laughs> But this is her, and, and she's written some short stories before, which I need to look up. But then I say that and I won't appreciate it because I'm not a short story reader. So let's just start here with Kathleen Jennings. Uh, she is also um, based in Brisbane, which is just near me. I live in Queensland and grew up um, on a cattle property in Western Queensland. So kind of in the same space that I'm in, which feels nice. I like that. So I have started this book. I'm on page 68 um, and it's it's amazing. It's very dark and look at this real gothic vibe um, and really mysterious, but without being annoying and just putting mysteries out there. It's, it's working us through. I can feel myself being worked through a mystery. So it's sort of from the point of view of Bettina or Tina and her father and her brothers went missing and we kind of 
open up with her being really controlled by her mother and kind of living this really homebody um, kind of life and being in this bubble with her mum. And as it kind of starts to unfold, um, she's receiving these mysterious letters. She's obviously hunting for her brothers. She lives in a small town and the story is starting to unfold as she's starting to interact with people from her past in the town. And it's starting to appear that she may not be as innocent as first thought. It's kind of a book where there's no, it's not following this kind of linear story. It's really fluid and moving. And here is a child. Hi, darling. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's hard to kind of pin down exactly what it's about. Um, but I am completely in love with the writing. I am completely in love with where it's taking me. And um, yeah, really excited that I picked this book up first in this little project. So I'm going to um, finish reading this today because I only have another 100 or so pages to go and I will let you know my final thoughts and I'll let you know a bit more of a pin down understanding of what's going on. So yeah, this is the start of a, a little series. So um, thanks for joining me in discovering 2020 new releases of Australian fiction. I'll let you know how I go with this book. So. <laughs>
So I just think that the way that the author manipulated my brain <laughs> and the beauty of her writing was just a really huge success. Another thing that was really super refreshing was that this is set in the Australian bush. They talk about, you know, wanting to see the sea so you know that it's set in the country. The, the kind of cliche Australian book set in the bush in small towns with mysteries is, it does my head in because it's, you know, it's all blokes and sheilas and, you know, the setting felt a lot more authentic to me rather than sort of the cliche Australian bush stories that go around. This is essentially a murder mystery. It will a mystery set in the bush in Australia, but it is, the setting is so much more real for me. And the way that the connection to the underworld of the land, the spirit of the land is portrayed through these fables and through these stories is just the most clever thing, I think. There's a, a few references in the fables to the ancestors, to the spirits, to the First Nations people of the land, which I thought was really well done. There's also a prominent family in this story that builds fences and fences people in. Um, and I thought that was, I took that as a reference to colonialism. I just think that the, the layers in this book are so many and there's little dives that you can go in each section. I just thought it was just so well done. Really, really clever writing. If you're looking for a bit of mystery, a bit of whimsy, uh, um, something that will surprise you and something that sets mood and tone and setting to perfection, this is your book. I would highly recommend. I hope if you're watching from overseas that you can get this book, um, even though you can't see the cover this light. It has been a real delight to read and I'm really glad that my um, 2020 new release project brought me to this book. Highly, highly recommend. Five stars. Yay. Okay, so first book down for this 2020 new release project. What a delight to begin with. Um, I'll see you in the next project in the series when I pick up the next book on that huge list. Okay, let me know if you pick this book up and what you think. I'm, I'm dying to hear about from everybody who's ever read it. I think, um, I think you're all going to love it. Okay, that's enough raving. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.